Welcome to another edition of Max TV Magazine. It's all about looking back at the last 99 episodes, 101 to 199. Max producers, camera operators, and editors all have had a blast meeting unique people, going all over this beautiful province, seeing great events and great people, learning about them and what makes this beautiful province tick. <laughs> oh, hi. Sorry, you, you caught me strolling down memory lane. Can you believe it? The 200th episode of Max TV Magazine. I mean, my goodness, we've seen some incredible people and places all over this beautiful province in that time. And talented people, too, musically alone. In fact, I was just checking out a few of my favorites. Here, have a look for yourself. Mostly practice every day. We practice for four to six hours. That's if we don't have no homework. We gave our big screen TV away, our leather couch and armchairs, just to accommodate these children and to play their music. about I think four at the time maybe even three and uh, he had a birthday party and there was a song playing and uh, in the middle of the song there's this dramatic pause and he kind of stopped and almost instinctively as a showman he knew that he needed to stop there and everybody was like in awe he was this kid he could barely hold up the sticks and he's pounding these drums. It took me 46 years to actually get, get together with her. I think music is one of the basic things that keep people young, keep you happy, you know. Um, and that's what I think what we, we really had a, a, a thing going and it was mostly really music and everybody around us liked music, you know, the people we, we associate with like music. We like people coming with music, <laughs> lots of music. <laughs> use my music as my tool um, to help accomplish goals just like a physio and an OT would. Our, our biggest things here at Sherbrooke right now are to help reduce loneliness and helplessness and boredom. Um, it's so wonderful to see that spark in their eyes. I'm going to put your hands right here so you can feel, oh there, yes, put your hand on there. Down in the valley, the valley's so low, hang your head over and hear the wind blow. Uh-huh, oh, there you are, oh! Hear the wind blow, love. I can just go in there and, and um, be with those residents and just know that I have made a huge difference in their life, even, it's for, even if it's for that 45 minutes, that I've made a huge difference in their quality of life that day. I forget about all my troubles, that makes me feel good if it's good music. <laughs> Anytime you're thinking about me, that's the time I'll be thinking of you. And don't forget animals. Max TV cameras have cozied up to every kind of creature on God's green earth all over this beautiful province. In fact, why don't we check out some of the coolest animal moments right now? Hey, would you like that? Yeah. We're 
horses get aggressive because everything's going at full tilt, right? We're chasing a cow around the arena, so that horse, this becomes a pretty fun game for a horse, so he wants to get in there and take charge. We have to respect the horse, too. It's always mutual. So the only way you do that, you have to know yourself and you have to know what respect is. A lot of people don't know what respectful is until they actually experience it. For me, it's a matter of trying to show how much this horse can dance because he is a Spanish dancer. He is a cool horse. On the other hand, I have to be compassionate towards what's enough, what's too much, and to make sure that he's okay about what he's doing. To use something that's so instinctual and so intuitive for them, and I think that's so highly satisfactory to a dog or to any animal that's put into a, a, a situation where it uses its instinct that it, that's bred with. The whole transition sort of transitioned me as well and brought about a change in the way that I view life and, and an alternative way to manage a farm. Having trained dogs for the last 30 years, uh, a lot of police service dog basic work, and competed in a sport called Schutzen at the international level, uh, my wife and I felt that our dogs could do something even more. And so we looked into the narcotic uh, business, and uh, not the selling of, but the finding of. And at the end of the day, we're all pretty tired, but the dog ends its day thinking, man, that was fun. I can hardly wait till tomorrow. Doing? This is a very, very old sport, probably 5,000 years at least um, that we know of, possibly quite a bit longer. There she is. Okay, she's telling me she's ready, she's in position. She's high over the pond, a little bit upwind, she's ready. Good girl. You can take a bird off a, off a fence post or out of a tree, and a lot of the people that I know, inside of seven days, the bird is free flying like what you've seen here this morning. Inside of 30 days, they're a partnership in the field killing ducks. But it's a relationship built on trust. Once it trusts you and, and settles down to, to um, this relationship, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. This is Delta. Oh, now Delta's gonna go crazy. Delta. This is Delta, and he's got her fingers right in my skin. All right, dude, <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> That's okay. That's a it's a hazard of the job. Good boy, Otis. Such a good dog. You're working hard. This is why we get paid more for our eggs. Oh look! They found something to worship. Max TV crews have been all over this gorgeous province. I mean, they've put on thousands upon thousands of kilometers to capture these great stories. And in that time, we've met some interesting people, seen some amazing places, and some incredible buildings. In fact, check out a few of our favorites right now. I have to ask you, Kathy, is this, is this typical of a train station back in the day? Very much so, very much so. They were all like this. Uh, they were scattered across the province every eight to 10 miles. They brought them in on a train, prefab. So they all looked very much like what you're seeing here today. And now this was more than really just, they're more than just a transportation hub. These really became the central marketplace for every town and village. They were, I mean, uh, for communication purposes, the telegraph. This is also, if the farmers were coming here with their grain, they were going to spend their money while they were here.
started milling flour in 1907, milled to about 1979. It's a national heritage site. Uh, we've been working on this restoration since about 1996. There's a worm that would feed the flour down into the bag. And when it clicked off, the worm stops and you'd have 100 pounds of flour. had not been insulated uh, at all in the walls or the ceiling uh, when it was built. In the 50s, around 58, they got some young kids to crawl up into the attic and drop insulation in between the studs. Not really insulation, but uh, different types of shavings. There were shavings and some, sawdust, and you know, it was mixed. They weren't always the same. This room here is the Diefenbaker Suite named after John Diefenbaker, who moved here through his, with his parents in his high school years. The, the other bidders were going to have it torn down, and we were the only ones that wanted to save the building. When I heard that, my heart kind of fell. Here we are at the Keyhole Castle. Many people make the comment that, you know, we always wanted to see inside, we've driven by it for years, or they used to know someone who lived here, and they're, they're happy to be able to come in and, uh, you know, spend a night or two. It was Samuel McLeod and, and his wife put a lot of themselves into this and in giving the architect direction. And one of the things they liked was this sort of eclectic mix. So there's all sorts of different styles that come in to the design. On the top floor, there are keyhole windows and on every, at every axis, so east, west, north, south. There's a community sense of involvement to really try to keep this theater in St. Brew, keep it viable. It's basically a Quonset hut. It was uh, 1951 when they first built it. It was gonna be a farm implement uh, repair and or dealership and that was only open for maybe two years until they decided to convert it uh, and make it into a theater and then converted to the community theater in 87. The building that we're in right now is the Maple Creek Commercial Hotel and it is pretty much Maple Creek's oldest continually operated business. In 1886 it was billed as the largest hotel in the Northwest Territories, first class in all departments. The remarkable thing about the 1911 lobby that we're in right now is the woodwork in the lobby is all the original woodwork from 1911 and the floors, those are the original 1911 marble floors and are still here remarkably in 2000. 14. Sometimes I'm overcome with a sense of creativity and I have to express myself physically. And creativity can manifest itself in an infinite number of ways and we've captured many of them right here on Max TV Magazine. Observe. Woo -woo -woo. Woo -woo. I need you to just focus on the color. You have one? I do. So have that locked in your mind. This is weird, Brad, because to me it feels bright. It feels, uh, I'm, I'm feeling like, like sunbeams almost sort of uh, in the back of my mind right now. Um, feels like yellow. <laughs> okay, that freaks me out. One of the ladies that I know has given me some repetitive feedback after buying one of my pieces that she has in the front of her house. And she says it doesn't matter what kind of day I've had at work, 
whether it was good, whether it's bad, um, I walk into my house and I see that piece and it just makes me feel really joyful and really calm and really settled and it just is a nice start to the second part of my day. artist does all the real work because it's um, obviously it doesn't take as long to write the words as it does to draw the words so every page I would kind of estimate that it would take me about an hour to do the writing and then I would hand it off to Chris Steininger who's the artist that I was working with Well, when I was little, I used to play with shadows all the time. We lived in this really old house that was creaking and kind of had noises to it because it was old. And there was these trees outside the window and when the cars would go by, you'd see the shadow move across the wall. Just kept on cutting for him. <laughs> Hello. Hello, who is this? Dick Gassman. Oh, Dick! <laughs> Dick, uh, my name is D Dave Letterman. It's a pleasure to chat with you, sir. How are you today? Real good, real you know, good. You know, Dick, last night on our uh, television show, The Late Show here on CBS, we featured a little ad for you and your service station, and we, we made some jokes about your name. I hope you don't mind. No, I sure don't. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of an unusual name, though, isn't it? <laughs> Just like to know how you got a hold of it. Yeah. many Halloween costume contests because people assume it's store-bought, where really it's me in July staying up till four in the morning sewing a Macho Man costume. So uh, you always want to find that, that delicate balance that it's actually homemade but looks really pro. Spider-Man was out in the early 60s and it's out now in the early 2000s. So people that are 50, 30 or 10 years old, every kid has a Spider-Man knapsack, toy, candy cane, whatever it might be. It creates a connection, a comic book culture connection, I find. It's a very recognized character, so the response is very positive. I'm Eric Iverson, as far as His Excellency, Sir Peter Iverson. I'm Black Jack Gunther Roar from the Insatiable. I guess dig, uh, it's just about doing things that we dig. Bill Stamp, who is the uh, owner, uh, he uh, started actually uh, as a subsidiary of his other company, Cinepost Films. The branch uh, was basically developed to uh, do 3D animated commercials. Uh, Sastel, who was uh, doing a lot of commercials with Cinepost at the time, and um, they re requisitioned Bill to uh, learn how to do 3D animation because that's where they were deciding they wanted to go as far as their ad campaigns and here we are today seven eight years later and we've been producing ever since don't hesitate save data and connect automatically in hundreds of locations with sastel select i don't know if you know this but i'm a bit of a foodie so you can trust me when I tell you that we have explored some exquisite food on this program. Met some talented chefs, been to incredible food destinations, well made, well shot, thoroughly enjoyed by our camera crew and the camera stopped rolling. And probably the reason why I put on about 40, 50 pounds since we started. Check it out.
It's rotisserie style grill while the meat is slow cooked over charcoal after being marinated 24 to 48 hours. There's 10 different cuts of meat and roasted pineapple. The roasted pineapple that we use has been done on the grill. It's been marinated in simple syrup, then it's finished in brown sugar and cinnamon. Oh, it's like juggling. Yeah, kind of. They only have three restaurant menu only for six months. Hundred percent flavor with ram. Or mix with ram because they make tender. I pursued it wholeheartedly and you know, fell in love with it. You know, the different, uh, the makeup of, of Cajun Creole, Louisiana style food is uh, from African and, and Spanish and French, heavily French influenced. And that, that was just perfect. I, I, I wanted to, you know, learn everything I could about all of it. <laughs> I studied culinary arts, uh, well, a few years ago, and I had to now to put my little piece of my art on the, in every plate. When people can watch you cooking, not maybe it's okay, not maybe not really, but making something in front of them where they trust more in you because they I, I want them to see what I'm doing and also I want to see their reaction because it's very important now. It's interaction, that's why this was the concept. Interaction with the customer. So I make the food, I put them in their tables and I see their reaction right away. Offer them something different. Well, that's it. Episode 200. I'd like to take this moment, if I could, just to thank all the past producers, directors, writers, editors, graphic designers, camera operators, basically everybody working so hard behind the scenes to make all these episodes look as great as they do and make me look good too. That's no easy feat. Although we're going to leave you now with some of my not so good moments, but until then, we'll see you in episode 201 right here on Max TV Magazine. You stay classy, Saskatchewan. Hey, Max, who wants some popcorn? Who wants some celebratory popcorn for episode 200? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Good boy. Good boy. Brad Grass, who actually hosts Seth Tell Max Magazine, is in the show. And uh, he gets to uh, dance in leotards and the Beyonce number, Destiny's Child, all the single ladies. So it's hilarious. He's a, quite a fine actor. <laughs> We cook it all over flame. Barbecues, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, <laughs> barbecues. We don't barbecue that anymore. We don't barbecue barbecues. Hop, 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 hop. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Max Magazine. My pinning? <laughs> done, done, okay. done! It's time to bone up on all things bony. <laughs> awful lot of bones in that, yeah. It's a building with old things in it. Ah, uh, oh, what's it? 
Oh, you know what I'm talking about. I could just sense it. <laughs> Butterfly. <laughs> Three, two, one. Cooking over flames is as old as fire itself, but when did the concept of the barbecue begin? As a curatorial assistant of paleontology, and he's... Ah. Boo -da -boo -boo -da -boo. -a -boo. Until next time. God, that's it. That's, that's the way to end that one. Just, uh, uh. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastail.com. Max TV programming is now available on Max TV On The Go at maxtvonthego.sastail.com.